Ladies and gentlemen, our lead story today comes with a trigger warning. The visuals that you're going to see on your screens are disturbing and unsettling to say the very least. This morning, 20-year-old Aarti Yadav was walking on her way to work in Wasai in Mumbai when she was suddenly assaulted by a man from behind who was wielding a spanner. She fell down after being hit on her head by a spanner and was struck again and again, at least 15 times, till she succumbed to her injuries. Her assailant is her own ex-boyfriend. Yes, Rohit Yadav, the assailant who you can see on his screens, can be seen standing over the woman's body with the bloody spanner still in his hand. Chillingly, he is heard screaming by onlookers, why did you do this? Why did you do this to me? Listen in. That's what this deranged man, this psychopath yelled at that woman. What did that woman do? Apparently, according to his suspicions, she had taken another partner and that's what his ego could not resist. But here's what personally impacts me. Look at the visual. We have frozen a frame of this video and look at the number of people who are watching this unfold in front of them. At least seven to eight on your, on your screens at this point. They could have all stopped this from happening. The boy was not armed with a gun. He wasn't even bearing a sharp weapon like a knife or a dagger. Together, all of these people could have either easily overpowered a 20-year-old man. But they didn't. One of them tried, apparently. That's what eyewitness reports say. One of them tried, maybe half-heartedly, but was scared into submission by this guy. Anyway, for what it's worth, this man has been taken into custody and he's facing charges of murder. Listen in. Asuba. नौ बज के फोर्टी फाइव मिनट पे लड़की काम पे जा रही थी तब उसका एक तो एक्सप्रिय करे उसने उसके पास जो हथियार था वो बड़ा एक नट बोल्ट टाइट करने का पाना रहता है उसका हथियार करके इस्तेमाल करके उसके सर में मल्टीपल इंजरी करके उसका उसको मार डाला आरोपी को हमने इंक्वायरी के लिए ताबे में लिया है आगे की प्रोसीजर आगे की कार्रवाई चल रही है Now, dear viewers, this is not an isolated incident. Let's take you through some of these incidents that have happened in the last 12 months alone. Earlier, in April this year, a 22-year-old woman by the name of Nea Hiremath was stabbed to death by a jilted lover on college campus in Karnataka's Habali. In November last year, what unfolded on the streets of Delhi can still send shivers down anyone's spine. A spurned lover stabbed a 16-year-old girl not once, not twice, but 34 times, and he didn't stop there. Despite seeing the girl lying in a pool of blood, he came back and then batters her head with a boulder. I mean, what can I even say about such crimes? There was the case of Leela Pavitra, a 25-year-old woman stabbed to death by a 28-year-old estranged lover more than 16 times in full public view outside her office in Bengaluru. The visuals which you're now going to show on your screens are from Pune where a jilted lover attacked a girl with a sickle in broad daylight. This after the girl ended a relationship with him, citing bad behavior. Ladies and gentlemen, many psychiatrists feel that those involved in these crimes are ill-equipped emotionally and cannot deal with rejections or no's easily. And no matter what these men say, or what anyone says, this isn't love, this isn't affection, this isn't care. The core issue is definitely not love, but control, control and fragile egos. Does misogyny in this society and also the over-romanticization of one-sided love in our movies, especially in movies in the South, have a significant role to play in crimes in the name of love? I'm asking these pertinent questions to my guests who are joining me live at this point. We have Nirmal Kaur, former IPS officer, Dr. Harish Shetty, noted psychiatrist. We are joined by Dean, Dr. Zina Chokat Ali, who is an activist and someone who has spoken out multiple times in this case. And we are also being joined by Dilip Cherian, a prominent and a very concerned Mumbaiker, if I can say so. I'll come to you, Dr. Harish Shetty, as a psychiatrist. I, I mean, can you put give us a window into these minds? What causes an individual 
to do this to someone he once loved at one point a brutal brutal murder <clears throat> such individuals have a sociopathic traits they are completely overwhelmed with anger they get emotionally blinded and they do not think about the consequences nor are they aware of what they are doing one more one more addition to this is in a country which has okay. anonymity as one of its most important aspects in busy cities these guys believe what they are doing is appropriate and they don't share their anger with anybody else thirdly there is no love this guy must have given enough hints to the girl in the past this guy must have been very possessive extremely controlling and very paranoid but what is also shocking Absolutely. to me is that why are you showing this videos on your screen copycat suicides are a fact and copycat murders also do happen so i would request you mirror now channel this channel i always watch not to show this pictures and these videos continuously all the time on the screen now having analyzed a lot of such murders in Do the past what okay. i find is girls who have very low self esteem girls who have had sexual abuse in the past girls who have no support system girls who do not have enough enough understanding of their own self fall a prey to this men who are not lovers but only vultures and murderers so it is important to educate the girls it's important to rein in the men and it's important for a for a community no, but doc, to be so dr hari shetty yes dr hari shetty why are we focusing i know that's not the bulk of your argument but why are we focusing on educating girls this girl probably as you said took the right step she was at some point in love with this man called rohit she realized i'm sure as you pointed out she realized what those ali uh, what the kind of personality he is but then if she if you if someone like her dares to leave a boy like this this is what it befalls and also i would like to just clarify to our viewers we at mira now have no intention of sensationalizing this footage which is why we have blurred it we have paused it at correct in at key critical junctures we have no desire of sensationalizing and using this to get ratings at trps but we also feel at this point and nirmal kaur i'll like to get you on this point is that as much as this a psychological problem this is also a law and order problem nirmal kaur where on this uh, the case of copycat murders is it some where do these criminals these psychopaths get their inspiration from is it by watching such crimes in the news or is it in the in the form of entertainment in the form of the movies which kind of maybe justify or glorify this behavior or is it just generations of inbuilt patriarchy which may which causes their ego to shatter the moment they hear a word no what causes what leads to this behavior you know patriarchy alone is like you know they are women psychopaths also maybe the ratio is less some experts say that it is 1 to 1 is to 4 so patriarchy alone cannot uh, kind of explain this kind of psychopathic crime and what you are saying is that sensationalizing or copycat murders okay. or you know some kind of you know uh, you know public showing encourages some kind of people you know the the modus operandi and all but i believe a lot is in their genes also they cannot take rejection they have this glorious sense of self entitlement you know that we are entitled to anything that we want on the earth and because the girl is not listening to us anymore they are entitled to kill her and on top of it blame her like this guy is saying why did you do it why did you do it he is the one to blame and he is blaming her he has killed her after that he is blaming her for uh, making him kill her this is you know and look at the role of the bystanders also they are looking i am sure with so many men around so many yeah, people around absolutely. they could have easily overpowered him but they did not they did not even try to you know control him or hold him or anything this is what our society you know a lot of apathy absolutely. has come into the community and the society i remember there was a famous photograph um, american photographer took it in africa somewhere of african famine and there is a vulture circling and a kid is dying vulture yes in sudan yes and somebody commented yes you were referring to the child who's dying yes they said there are two vultures not one because they said the photographer himself is a vulture because instead of saving the child he is more part in the movement of you know the of vulture movements waiting for the kid to die and that photographer later committed okay. suicide that is what i read in the media somewhere but you know our society yes. is even worse the yes. community see so many people are watching was it difficult to overpower that uh, 20 year old boy rohit yadav or whatever his name is nobody is even seriously trying so this apathy yes. you know abdicating we have abdicated everything to the police or to the authorities 
you know, every citizen is a policeman without uniform. What are the citizens doing? Nothing. So many citizens are around. A crime is happening in full view, in public view. Nobody is interfering. Can this happen in any village of ours, in the old time village? No. No. Every, every member of the community thinks it is his duty to see that society works smoothly. So this guy, I don't think that, you know, they need any inspiration. Doctor. They are bad enough to begin with these kind of psychopathic murderers. So, uh, and it is, no, but... it is somehow innate in them, innate behavior. This control, dominance, lying, cheating, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm not you know? sure, Nirmal Kaur, I agree with that. I'm not sure, Nirmal Kaur, I agree with that view that this is innate behavior. This is not encouraged by what they see. Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, Dr. Harish Shetty has a point such by running the uh, this coverage, it further emboldens such people. I don't know. Zignat Shaukat Ali, as an activist, I'm sure you will agree with me when I say that there's been an alarming rise in such cases here, maybe in terms of the frequency, in terms of notoriety, in terms of the of the barbarity with which uh, uh, crimes of passion are carried out by these, uh, by, as part of this jilted lover syndrome that we are witnessing in this country. What, according to you, Dr. Ali, spurs this? Is it something which is inbuilt, as I uh, asked uh, Nirval Kaur, in generations of patriarchy inbuilt? Is it exposure to the wrong kind of media or entertainment that we are watching, on uh, which they consume on their phones? What is it? Thank you for inviting me. I think this is, you know, one, this kind of brutality and this kind of inhumanity, this kind of lack of empathy, and this kind of, uh, you know, villainous behavior uh, can be attributed to, it's an all-round thing to what you have said. But yes, I do agree that there, okay. I, I, I do submit that there is a great amount of patriarchy. See, even in films, you know, one can't blame this on films, but if you look at the general trend, mm. we always find that the man has the upper hand and he has always been given that extra, you know, bit of food and that extra uh, bit of importance and that extra something that should be given to both children alike. So that is, I think, a, one cannot deny that the patriarchal mindset is definitely, I mean, how can one otherwise uh, even think that uh, you, uh, people who are the males, the people around there were also males who were watching and one poor man came along and tried to help, but he was frightened of. But a man taking a spanner, I mean, he's, yeah. he's got an industrial wrench and a spanner in his hand and he's beating this woman 15 times in the viewing of all the men and, uh, you know, the public that is looking on. Now, how does one explain that there is, a, that this public is looking on yeah. at this inhuman action without saying anything? And maybe they were a bit uh, afraid or whatever that may be, but still it would have, uh, you know, there, there should have been much more anger shown in them. But why is that anger lacking? I think that we yeah. need a comprehensive study we need to make a comprehensive, because this is going on long enough, every year such crimes are on the rise. Yeah. And to, uh, you know, to put it on the back burner will not do anymore. We have to take it up front. We have to find out what's going on and we have to bring a, a, a stop to this. So, uh, you know, there is, and, and to my mind, there is this great element of inbuilt, you know, self-entitlement that a man feels that he has towards a woman. How dare he do a yeah. thing like that? I mean, there are many yeah. men who have jilted women. Uh, you, I mean, men, men, uh, it's the other way around also that, you know, the man can go for somebody else, but you don't find a woman behaving in this uh, inhuman fashion because she has no support. I mean, it's not because she yeah. doesn't have the support that she doesn't do it. Because I, I don't think that women are, you know, cut out for that kind of violence. I mean, there are women who are also violent, but Basically, you find that the okay. the you know the wider element, the wider patriarchy, and the wider entitlement, and the wider wider male ego that prevails has to be has to be studied, and we have to bring about some form of control. And also, you see, I think that you know these people who are watching on the street, and you know who let these things go by. I think one one has to bring them into question. What happened to you? Don't you see? I, don't I, you see a human being, I another did, human being, want... who's being butchered and killed and hacked to death? You know, in this brutal yeah. and this is inhuman and this, uh, you know, uh, shocking fashion. It should have shocked them out of their wits. 
to phone a policeman to get hold of a policeman to do something. But this, I, I think, you know, is, is getting very far and it cannot be neglected. One cannot just say that it is happening and, you know, that... Uh, the, there is an inherent. I, I did want to. I, I do want to. Uh, Dr. Ali, I do want to get in uh, Dr. Shetty's view also on that. But before that, let me also bring in Dilip Cherian. Dilip Cherian, you know, you're someone who understands the concept of packaging and co coming up with the right communication message on screen at this point. When I first read about this crime and I tried to understand what pers what gets or what gets a lover to use a spanner and use that to bludgeon someone to death. And the first parallel that came into my mind was a character called Hathoda Tyagi from a, from a very popular series that went on OTT very recently. Now, that guy was apparently, was definitely shown as a villain, but he was shown as a vigilante who used a hammer to bludgeon uh, people who had apparently raped his sisters. That was the story. And, but the crime was very grisly. And this was, again, a man who was taking the law into his own hands and using a, a household tool as a weapon. And there were so many pages and posts which I saw on Twitter and Instagram trying to celebrate him, trying to glorify him, something like that. Is that indicative of the culture? Are we glorifying violence? Are we glorifying vigilantism? Which then, there's a very small, thin line between vigilantism and, abjil, ab, and abject villainy, which we are seeing being crossed in a case like this. I think we need to focus on the abject villainy of this and to start putting a blame game on whether ott is responsible for it whether media's showing of this violence is uh, is a reason for this is probably inadequate by way of explanation as someone who has considered bombay okay. a largely safer city than many other cities that i have i have the opportunity of being in i am actually shocked by this mm -hmm. as much by the behavior of the bystanders because Bombay is a city where there is so much life on the streets that this is shocking that six people standing there could not three of them or four of them get together and stop a crime of such gross and you know indescribable violence. Second, I think you know patriarchy the fact that today's children are not used to being uh, trained for a certain volume of rejection, all those are long-term things. But I think that we need to understand that as citizens, we need to be able to begin to enforce a sense of duty towards fellow citizens, whether it's rescuing someone who's, you know, fallen in the deep end of a pond, whatever it is, I think that whether it's a car accident victim, I think we need to make sure that communications of the right kind, image making of the right kind, makes heroes of people who intervene and ensure that violence of this kind or dangers of an unsuspected kind are managed and that you save the life of a citizen. Okay. I think that is what is missing today and it is shocking that an urban agglomeration like Mumbai, I can understand this happening in Delhi, where there is a slightly greater disconnect. But this kind of thing happening in Bombay is shocking, and it's something that needs extremely I think quick Dilip, addressing I think, sir, the, and analysis. I think, I think, sir, the first thing which probably we need to get it out of our psyche is that there are some cities which are safer for women than others because, I mean, the depravity and we went through a quick, my colleague Astha had pointed out a list of such events which you put out earlier on the screen. They come from all across the country, including Mumbai and Pune as well. Uh, let me go across to Dr. Harish Shetty. All of our panelists, Dr. Shetty, have pointed out what, as I also mentioned, was most galling to me, this, this tendency of us to watch a tamasha that's going on the screen. If there is... If there is a road mishap, you'll find 10 cars circling around the two vehicles who have collided and are having an argument and they're very busy watching even if they held up the traffic jam. If there are signs of a domestic argument coming from a house, you'll have 10 people lounging around the gate to watch kya tamasha chal raha. And when, then we see something like this. When uh, when an incident happens, he's a 20-year-old boy. He's not the most strongest atta katta guy around. He's armed with a spanner, not the most lethal of weapons. There are seven to eight people at least watching him at this point. 
Any of them could have acted and stopped it, but instead some of them choose to shoot this video from different angles here. Is it, as a psychiatrist, what is it amongst Indians specifically that love, that makes them so keen on watching a Tamash instead of stepping it? Or is it a basic response of fear when they see something so un unthinkable, so unimaginable having in front, happening in front of them? Well, we are a country of bystanders historically, which is why a handful of British ruled a country. That's point number one. Point number two is all yeah. of us are raised by parents and told, Sida ja ke sida vapasau, kisi ke jamele me mat pado. Say, be careful, don't get into any jamelas. Number three, one of the most adverse effects of globalization is disconnection. Disconnection. Social alienation is also mm -hmm. complete in Bombay, and Bombay is not much safer than Delhi at all. No urban areas are safer. At this, and then what happens in such an event? There's a shock. But then the good Samaritan inside the human being dies, also because unconsciously he's not practiced this across his life in schools and colleges and in his own community. In fact, it dies also mm. because he's very worried if okay. he goes to the police station. What will the police tell him? In fact, it dies because Indians, slowly in a globalized era, are living in towers, buildings, and are living in isolated spaces and in lonely homes where the other yeah. flat, other house, other slum, my neighbor, is gone. In Marathi, we say, Shejar Dharmatsa Mrityu Zalila Hai. So point is disconnection. Social alienation, yep. upbringing as Ur a child, absolutely. Are all Urban, major factors. It's not only Urban loneliness. Agreed. These are the facts Urban which are loneliness, very important. Uh, unless, especially unless, for men in, we, a, in unless we be last line, unless we yeah, be disconnection by healthy reconnection in our households. In our buildings, in our mollas, in our slums, in our schools and colleges, social responsibility will always be a casualty. Doctor, uh, Doctor Zina Ali, it's a very curious contradiction that has been pointed out. On one hand, we say, Mera baap ka kya jata hai? Why should I get involved in something like that, in a jamela that happens in front of me? But at the same time, I am curious enough to watch what is going on, record what's going on, even share it with my friends here. What leads to this hypocrisy, Doctor Ali? I think, you know, just a self-complacency and, you know, protection of your own self, that you, the, your whole life centers only around you, that's one point. And you see this complete lack of humanity. And you know what the, 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 the uh, so psychiatrist uh, the, on our panel has just stated, that in this area of globalization, you see yeah. mass killings, you see murders, you see, uh, you know, everything is, comes under the acceptable norm uh, without question. So I think the basic thing is your own conscience and in your own culture. See, okay. we are a very different kind of a people. And, uh, you know, the, the Gandhian understanding of non-violence, of, of humanity, of, of, of respecting somebody else's thinking. If somebody likes you or doesn't like you, you see, all these things together, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a very complex situation. It's a very complex question and it's a very complex problem we doesn't have a one-line answer to it there are at, at different levels one has to work okay. with it yes also at the level of the stage of the law where the law takes over that is one angle the psychiatrist angle that is another angle the family angle that you know that nourishes patriarchy i think that is a very important angle that we have to look at that we from when we so there are, so there are multiple also, levels <laughs> That multiple, so, uh, you know, problems that. So there are multiple us. levels, as you point out, Doctor Ali, at at a at a personal level, at a familial yeah, level, at a social level, and at the and at the level of law and order as well. Nirmal Kapoor, Nirmal Kaur, as a former IPS officer, at the end of the day, this is a law and order problem first and foremost. If women can't feel safe on the streets in front in crowds in broad daylight daylight while going to work. Uh, they don't know when they will be uh, hit by someone from behind with a spanner or a hammer or something else, whether that person is known to them, not known to them. It is first and foremost a safety issue. Now, I understand every police, every individual in every street cannot be policed. But as a law, from a law and order point of view, how do we tackle this? 
See, this is not a very general kind of a crime. This is by someone who is known to the victim. Many of these crimes happen by people known to the victim. This is more of an intimate partner violence kind of a crime, which is a special category of crime. So when you know the intimate partner violence in our society is not addressed properly, that is a very, very special category of crime where the intimate partner gets violent on being jilted or, you know, on being suspicion, if he's suspicious of something. So I feel, you know, that our society or even our criminal code has not you know, made special provisions for intimate partner violence. So we should have a separate category of crime where the, you are being stalked. This man must have been stalking her after she told him not to come after her. You know, they, all these things, you know, the stalking is a very, very uh, sad crime in which all, obviously within a year, the victim is 99% okay. of the cases killed. But we don't pay any attention to stalking as a crime. And also the disintegration of family, you only talk about patriarchy and patriarchal values of the family. It is also disintegration of the family, disintegration of the community bonds, disintegration of the values being taught in the family. You know, they say it takes about 12 people and 40 assets for normal development of an individual. Okay. So that normal development is lacking. You know, this fear, okay. this anger, the personality defects, the they're much more now. Because, you know, as a family, they extended to sort of even the nuclear okay. families are disintegrating now. Earlier children lived in disintegrating. Okay, so let, let me try and, and keep this. Let other. me try and end it on a concrete note. Let me try and end it, end it on a concrete note because I feel that we are now reaching into a point where anything and everything could be to blame. Dilip Cherena, I'll let you have the last word. Do we start off with stricter laws against talking to begin with? Most certainly. I think this, uh, what Nirmakar just mentioned, about mm. the fact that many of these crimes go unnoticed because they are not chargeable under any law is a factor. And we need to understand okay. that, you know, mm. as a society, the increase of violence, the nu nuclearization of individuals are all things that are going to happen anyway. What is most frightening, especially on the urban debate, is that in the next 20 years, India is going to see the fastest urban mm. growth ever. So the kinds of crimes yep. we're talking about, unfortunately, are only going to rise. And that is what we need to prepare for. And the police force is certainly not of the scale and size to be ever able to tackle the numbers we're talking about here. All right. Thank you, Dilip Cherian, for getting us that important summary that and that realization that this is going to be, this is going to be perhaps a sleeper of an urban problem that we need to tackle it. And as my guests have pointed out, it needs to be tackled on all levels. But maybe perhaps looking at stalking as a serious offense and categorizing as such perhaps is a logical starting point. Dilip Cherian, Dr. Zina Chokatali, Dr. Harish Shetty, and Nirmal Kaur, thank you so much for joining me with your views and perspectives here.